Hope everybody's doing good. Just kind of uh, been thinking about doing this for a while. Decided everybody's at home. Maybe they might want something to watch. So I decided to record a couple of fly time videos. Um, it's not that great. It's just on my iPad. But anyway, I think I'm just going to do like uh, simple trout patterns that I use on PEI and have pretty good luck with. The first one I'm going to do, I guess, is a uh, water boatman. I have one here somewhere. A couple, actually. So it's not necessarily any specific pattern, but it's just... Uh, what it is, I guess that's on a number 10 scud hook, same as the one I have in the vise. And uh, yeah, I started using them last fall and they were deadly. Um, anyway, I guess we may as well get going here. So I guess uh, these black thread doesn't really, uh, really pay too much attention to what color thread I use unless I'm tying something fancy. Salmon fly or something, I usually use white. So this is uni A dot. We're gonna get a little thread base going here. And we'll come back. I don't know, just beyond the the point of the hook or the barb. And the first thing we're gonna tie in is some thin skin. This is just brown. Have you scud back different things? Doesn't really matter, I don't think. Um, so I have this, I'm just kind of cut into a little strip, comes to a point just to tie in a little easier. I'm just going to catch that. It is going to want to roll, so I'm just trying to hold it as best you can on top of the hook. back far enough and we'll take our thread up maybe just yeah and back down to about a third of the way back and these are just uh, I don't know they call it rubber rubber hackle but this is super fly stuff just uh, this is like chartreuse with little black speckles anyway I'm just gonna take a piece I'm going to trim it after, so I'll cut it a little long. I'm going to tie it in on top of the hook. And I normally try and keep these like kind of angled forward. I think that's how they're supposed to be tied. So, so we'll try and get a little thread dam on the go, but I mean, when we go over the body with the dubbing, you can kind of force them ahead. And even when, uh, put the scud back or whatever thin skin over it, you can deal with it then. I'm just gonna trim that off. Trim it off after. Anyway, uh, what I've been using is, uh, this is probably the most successful color that I used. I only started fishing these last fall. And uh, this is just like super fine dry fly dubbing, which kind of made sense to me because I think uh, the way that most people fish them is on a sinking line, kind of in the same fashion as like a booby or a blob or something, where the fly floats above the line every time you yank it, it goes down and back up. But uh, I just fished on a floating line with, uh, I don't know, probably a 12-foot leader with a split shot and just quickly stripped and yanked it through the water. And for like a week and a half, two weeks, I caught so many fish. Anyway, we're just going to get her dubbing on a thread. One good thing about super fine dubbing, it is easy to put on, not like seals wear or something. Pain in the butt. Bring it off late. Let's 
see now, you know, like I said, the, the legs were kind of pointing the opposite direction I wanted, but now kind of have them out front. Just need to put like, the tiniest bit more, more dubbing. There. Now we're going to take our thin skin, pull it up over the fog, just kind of wrap it. Sometimes it'll try and like uh, fold up underneath your thread. But if you're careful, just to not let this happen, just straighten it up. You should be okay. Pull this up a little bit of tension. Sometimes thin skin can be a bugger to cut because it's kind of hard. Which is why I prefer scud back because it's more stretchy and you can get a cleaner cup, but I mean it's good enough. So I'll just uh, finish that up. Just put a little head cement on my thread before the wood finish. Trim these legs. I don't know. I mean, I just guess. I don't really pay too much attention to it. Um, I think a back swimmer has longer legs than a boatman, so I mean, it doesn't really. I mean, if they're too long, you can just if you think they're too long, you just cut them off at the lake or pond or whatever. Um, now, a lot of people put. Uh, UV resin on this. Let's pack my tape maybe a little bit. Um, which I sometimes do, but I don't think it affects the... There's not too much of it. This fly is going to fall apart. It's pretty durable. But, um, yeah. Anyway, so you can see that a little better. That's, uh, that's a water boatman. Like I say, just uh, kind of strip it back. See, my legs are pointed the opposite direction I'd like, but like really, that doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I just stripped them in quick, probably for a week and a half. I absolutely hammered rainbows with it, and I got a few fish over 20 inches. Um, I got a couple of brookies, probably close to 20 inches too, all in uh, a pond, and uh, I think it was probably late October, early November. And anyway, kind of a fun little pattern to fish. Strip it in quick, like almost like a popper, and the fish just hammer. Anyway, thanks for watching. Well, what we're going to do next, maybe some kind of leech. Later.